everybody. We are going to be painting this interdictor tonight. And let me get us set up. There we go. All right. And if you uh, weren't with me last time, we were doing some, uh, basically I've been doing a bunch of ships in this particular, yeah, let's drop everything, in this particular color scheme right here, uh, kind of black-ish in the middle and as it gets brighter green on the outside. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through everything. We're going to do the engine glow, the lights, the gray paneling, and do all of it. We're going to have some fun. Uh, yes, so that's the plan tonight. It's just getting set up here. So what I have done is I've got some uh, dark green in my airbrush here, and I'm going to, I'm not going to do this thing on the base, I'm going to do it off the base, and I'm going to start with the bottom first. And the reason I'm doing the interdictor last is because there's these gravity wells around here, and I didn't want to do them the same as I did all my other stuff. To, I think it's actually started to separate. There we go. It's coming out thicker now. Alright. So I do the bottom first just in case it doesn't come out exactly the way I want. But one of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to put some white paint in these holes. And uh, try to get them to be like the glow. That's doing them. Empty out my pot here. Okay. And I think I might do a couple of TIE fighters too while we're waiting that to dry. I brought a couple of TIE fighter squadrons out. Now these are squadrons I've already painted, but I think I'm gonna just have fun. I mean, I've got so many TIE. I got more TIE fighters than I can ever use, so might as well have some fun with some. Even if they screw up a little bit, I, I don't necessarily have to use them. And hi, Bancom. Thanks for joining us. Um, and one of the things, I, I, I got myself a little solution here, which is a little bit of um, paint thinner and a little bit of water. And I'm going to run that through my airbrush in between, swapping out paints. To... Uh, prevent clogs, because that's one of the problems I've been running into, is this thing gets clogged pretty easily, and I had to do some research and learn how to, um, how to clean it up. So, yeah, interesting. All right, so this is still drying, so I'm going to go ahead and mix, um, well, let's, let's mix a medium green. Let's mix a medium green, so I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, kind of dark, and I want a little bit of water. Mostly good. Let's test it on these ties. Oh, 
that's not bad. Okay, so we got a pretty good thickness there. We're mostly dry in here in the bottom. I probably should wait a little bit longer, but. testing at the bottom I'm being a little I'm being a little impatient because I also want to do the back and I didn't do the back yet so I'll do the back with this and I'm going to go a little farther out and get to the top of the bridge here which I didn't get before Make sure I get the sides this time too. Because in some of the other models, I didn't get the sides the first go around. So because typically, what I'll do is I'll like anchor it down like here and get it that way. Nice and thick in there. There we go. Now I'm gonna get the top. too shabby. Got a little more paint in here, so I think I'll do a couple more ties while that thing dries. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm um, using Reaper paints today. I do also have some Citadels because when I bring out the brush after this is, after I'm done with all the airbrushing, I'm going to be using Citadel for that. I learned a lesson. If you're doing any airbrushing or whatever, I do not recommend using Citadel paints. Um, in an airbrush. There are ways to do it and, and, and whatnot, but in, if you're new to it, like me, um, stick to Vallejo <laughs> or Reaper because um, the Citadel paints clogged my brush up pretty good. And I didn't know, I thought you could just rinse it and be done, but I had to disassemble the thing and, and clean my needle. pain in the butt. A little bit. A little bit of a pain in the butt. Not really. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, though, to be honest, because I like I feel like I learned a little bit while doing it, so, you know, that, that you learn by doing. You know, I'm not the type of person who just reads a rule book and starts playing a game. Usually I have to trial and error, play it a couple of times and get a good feel for it. Did you guys, um, Question, I got that airbrush for Christmas. Correct, yes, this is a Masters, uh, Master Airbrush. Got that in my compressor. And this is this is the compressor I got, it's just a little one. Um, I think it's caps, it's at a firm 15 PSI, so it doesn't really go any more than that, so can't get like a super strong one, but 15 seems fine for everything that I'm doing. some TIE Fighters. Just having fun with the ties. Not really doing a whole lot of detail on the ties. I can go back later with a brush and maybe do some highlights on them, but I'm just kind of, you know, having fun with them right now. Did you guys see the uh, MC75 preview today? For Armada, it looks good. Basically, my strategy is like I like to have 
all of my ships for our uh, for Armada mostly cannon, so I don't like to go like with crazy paint jobs as much. But for these guys, I decided to make an exception, and uh, and I decided I was going to do one of every Imperial ship type, and the Interdictor was the last one. So once I get them all done. Um, I'll probably post some pictures on Reddit and on my website and stuff. Some good close-up pictures. I did a couple of them on my on Crylock.com already. But uh, yeah, we're. Um, but I don't know if I, what I'm going to do for Rebels because I don't want to do the same color scheme for Rebels. That wouldn't make much sense. But I just don't have any specific plans on what I'd do there. Like if I would. If I would do them all the same color scheme, or if I do them all differently, because the rebels are usually all different, right? So, it's one area I'm not sure yet. I think what I'll end up doing is making them all different, but have similarities between them. So, like, they're all different, but they also all have a little bit of, uh, you know, let's say a little bit of blue and blue and white um, you know, or something like that and this way they can have their own little patches and some will have grays and some will have like a little bit of red here and that indicating what like home world they come from and, and stuff so, but, but give them all blue and white to show that they're united but then also let them have some you know, some stuff to show that they're also unique but I might make all the Mon Cal ships, all the MCs, like the same. That kind of makes some sense. I could see doing that. Okay, we got everything out of there. Not real clear. Any more live Legion Q and A videos? Oh, well, I did. Um, I did hear, and you can talk about Legion. Any of my any of my live videos, you can ask me about any of the games, or you can ask me whatever you want. So it's, my Q and A's aren't usually like restricted to a specific game, uh, but yeah, it looks like Legion should be arriving next month. So that is cool. I actually heard from FFG today that uh, the current plan is February, so that's exciting. And I'm trying to get a uh, a review copy early so I can start bringing you guys Legion coverage uh, right away. That is currently the plan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get some white down in here, and then in here a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I don't want to, it's too fine for me to want to use the airbrush for. So I'm gonna use water and a little bit of white paint, and I'm gonna make it really really thin. Uh, so this was so it's almost like a wash because I want it to settle in. To the certain little grooves and stuff. I gotta take my glasses off for this one because um, this is gonna be a tough. Alright. See how it's it's starting to like just it's, it's it's behaving a lot like a wash right here where it's dropping down in there and I want to get this part done before I do any of the other highlights and stuff because I don't mind if parts of this get overwritten but I want this to be the base because I'm gonna do uh, I asked some folks on reddit and one of the suggestions was to go with like a light blue a blue and white kind of some people suggested like Tron and I love Tron Legacy so, um, and I figured that won't clash too much. It'll look different, and that's fine. The interdictor's rings are allowed to look different, um, but but it, it won't clash too much with the rest of the fleet because I'm doing the engines in the same basic color. So I'm, that's basically it. I'm doing these guys in the same um, kind of glow that I'm doing the engines in. And I just wanted to make sure that this gets right into these rings. It's, it's tricky to get it in there perfect. And I can always go back over some of the parts where it bleeds over if I need to. But I'm going to be going over that with, uh, with blue anyway. But I think I'm going to do that last because I want that to be like a glow that's going over the paint. But I have to get this down first. 
I don't know if I had to. That's not what I wanted to do. Now what I should have done is I should have done the bottom first. But Armada is one of those games where you just don't see the bottoms of the ships. So, you know, you don't even really have to paint the bottoms if you don't want to. But in this case I will because as I blow the, you know, the, the blue glow over the top, uh, I will test that one on the bottom first. Because that one could get ugly. Okay, so we're doing it kind of like that for right now. I'm going to do the bottoms also. And all my airbrush paint is mostly dry now, so I'm doing this quicker. Because if you're doing this at home or whatever, like, I think the idea is with an airbrush, you want you don't want to just do one ship. That's why I pulled out the squadrons too, because it's, it's a lot of cleanup when you're done. And, you know, the, the idea is you kind of want to be like an assembly line almost and just do everything. Um... If you're going to go for the, go and do the effort of all of it. But in, tonight I was just doing the one ship. So that's why I pulled out them TIE Fighters. Like, let's, let's put this thing to work. If I'm going to go through the trouble of having to clean this thing up when I'm done, might as well, you know, do it with you guys, go live, answer some questions. I am very excited for Legion, though. Yeah, let's see if we got any more. So for Legion, I am, uh, I, I honestly think, I honestly think um, that if you're on a budget and you want to do Legion, just getting three core sets is going to be your way to go. Honestly, I know I made a video where I said two core sets and then one of each expansion or two of each expansion, but ever since we saw that Snow Trooper preview and then the Snow Trooper has the same upgrades that the Storm Trooper has, now I am thinking, why do I need to even buy a Stormtrooper expansion if the Snowtrooper comes with all the same stuff, you know? And 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 if they're gonna keep and, and if they're gonna do that, then I think that's great because maybe they're not trying to like milk us completely dry. I'm already, I mean, even three core sets, you're still spending like three hundred bucks unless you get them on sale, which you probably will get them on sale. But. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great for the for the customer for all of us. And honestly, from what I'm gathering with Legion, there are some upgrades that are more important than others. But a lot of the strength of units and objective play is going to just favor you having more units on there. So run, go light on upgrades. This part part of my like first impressions on Legion, my overall strategy seems to be go light on upgrades and focus more on more units than units with a ton of upgrades. All right, so now that that's drying, let's see. Yeah, so, all right. I have never played 40K. So, so many people, it's, it's funny because so many people compare Legion to 40k, and I, I'm familiar a little bit with aspects of 40k. Uh, as far as, like, the way their miniatures are, you know, come and you have to completely build them, and uh, shaving off all the pieces and clipping everything, and I see people doing that in the game stores I play with all the time. I talk to them about 40k a little bit, but boy am I glad Legion's not going to be exactly like 40k. Because, I'll tell you what, man, they charging like $100 for a rule book for one unit is rough. I would not be happy if that was uh, going to be the case. So now we're using, uh, what is this one? Moth green. And we're going to use mostly moth green. I'm going to add a touch of the other dark green that I was using, just so it's not ultra bright. And then I might do a, a touch, uh, a run through of just straight moth green on the very edges. So that's kind of how our, our pot looks right there.
can start to see some of the blending. Although I got a little, a couple of puffs right there. Hopefully I can smooth that out when I do the final edging. I think I'm starting to get a little clogged because I'm not getting all of my paint. So after this wave, I think I'm gonna take this thing apart and give it a little cleaning real quick before we do, well, at least before we do the blue. there but yes I think I made it a little too thick so I'm gonna clean this out a little bit Water in here, rinse it, get all the paint out of this thing. Let's see if I got a clog. Oh, now it looks like it's doing good. All right, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's good. to make sure I stir it good this time. So let's water it up a little bit. That's better. That's kind of what I want to do. a few more tests with this before I put it on the ship and I'll start on the bottom first just in case it sometimes they splatter a little bit and you kind of don't want that this one doesn't look like it's splattering right. oh yeah it's nice and bright Almost a little too bright. So I'll pull it back a little more when I do it, but it's okay because it's the bottom. so far what do you guys think I am here sorry I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking mostly at the model so I'm not reading chat quite that often um, so watching this making you want to spend the money and buy an airbrush well if you find a deal it's 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 fun this is definitely it's a lot of work though. Or, or at least cleaning up after yourself
That's not too shabby. and I don't want any green in there. Sometimes I'll stick a little paper towel in my pot too just to pull out the excess that don't want to come out. spray through it a few times. This is the quick way. The, long, the more thorough way is to take it apart. But I'd rather only do that if I need to, or at the very end. Alright. So now we're going to do a little white. This is actually an off-white, isn't it? Linen white? see that. Get very little. Well, I guess if I get closer. Okay. That'll probably work. And this one isn't as um isn't as sensitive as uh, I basically want it to be, but it works. It works. I'm not getting anything out of here now, which is bugging me. I think I need to take this off. Uh, yes, so I got stuff all over my needle. And it's, that's why. swamp here with pink thinner on it. I'm not getting nothing, so I gotta take it apart because it doesn't it's not one to work on me now. That's okay. You guys are living the pros and cons of this sort of thing. So if you're just using brush work, you just you know, grab a new brush, or you know, or, or all that good fun stuff. So we're taking a small painting break while we do a little bit of maintenance on this thing right here. Really got paint all over. I think it's clogged. The white went on a little too thick, I think. Do it. Oh, one can hope. And then 
we'll see. Still not there yet. Did I not get it good enough? So we're having a little delay here. I am going to take this thing apart. Missing something. Let me take this over to the sink real quick. Be right back. We're back, and so yes, raid tokens for Armada. Those are going to be interesting, and I wonder how many other ways there are to uh, either give them out or to uh, or to get rid of them, or maybe you can't get rid of them. I mean, the game's only six turns long, so and you're not going to get one on the first couple of turns. So I don't even know if it's going to be that big of a deal to try to get rid of raid tokens in Armada. Man, this is really in here good. This is why you don't want to use thick paints. Like, I should have probably just got some airbrush specific paints. So you see this, as I'm pushing the needle in and out, it's squirting out all that paint that's been stuck in there. That's wild. That's why it wasn't, <gasps> oh no, and we just dropped a piece. And of course, if you drop a piece, then you just destroyed the whole thing. But I found it. So we're okay. All right, let's try this again, see if I got it clean enough. That's the hope, right? The hope that we got it clean enough. And so what I do is I'll just put water in the top and make sure that I'm getting a mist that comes out. Ah. Wave 7, the Hammerheads and the Quasar? No. Um, wave 7 is going to be the Chimera, Thrawn's ship, and the MC-75, Admiral Radis's ship from uh, Rogue One. That will be fun. Oh yes, it's looking good now. I don't know if you see that. I don't know if that, I don't know if my camera's picking up the steam coming off of that, or the mist rather, but yeah, that's looking mighty good. Mighty good. All right, now let's put our white back in there and I can probably add, start adding some of the blue. I just wanna make sure we're getting white. Oh yeah, that looks, that's perfect. That's how it's supposed to look right there. You see that? That's how exactly how it's supposed to look. Alright. 
beautiful. So far. All right, so we're gonna start. I'm gonna add some blue into this, and we're gonna go with a little bit of lighter blue at first, and then I'll make it a little darker once we get it. Uh, and really, what is this one? Sapphire blue. But I'm mixing that with some of the white because I didn't. I just got this thing, so I didn't buy like a thousand paints. So I only have like ten. So I have to I have to mix colors a little bit which I don't mind. Let's get the white on the bottom first and then carry in that blue. Let's start with our engines first. They're the easiest to fix. Besides, if I don't like them, I can always go over them again with a brush and just say, okay, they're gray. You know, it's really not, not hard to do that. And I'm going to mix some void blue in there, make it a little darker. Shake it up real good for it. Oh, so I'm sorry, somebody is asking me how much I paid for the airbrush. Um, and I did not pay anything for it. It was a Christmas present. About 50 bucks. It's about 50 bucks, though, my wife tells me. Because it was a combo with the compressor and. It was on Amazon. It was on Amazon. It's a little darker, but it's not exactly how I want it. Um, yeah, just send it to me and I'll post it in the comments after the video is done. Okay. So if you want to know this particular airbrush, it was, uh, I'm going to, I'll post it in the comments, um, once the video is done and uploaded, like, after the live stream. So if you're watching this not live and you're watching it in the future, check the comments section below. So I think I'm going to have to use some gray and go back over here because it's not exactly the way I had envisioned it. But it's also not terrible and I think I can clean it up enough that it'll still look good. All right, now I want a little bit darker 
powder blue for like the last coat. It's gonna be too noisy if I make some tea. Go ahead, you're fine. I added a little bit of black in there too. Ooh, that's dark. Look at that. We'll see. That is dark. That's cool looking. Okay. You see, again, wear gloves. Or don't. And just have dirty hands. That's what I do. I'll have to scrub them pretty good after this. But before you go grabbing your your ship. Make sure. Kind of cool looking now, now with the darker, to make it blend in a little bit. Oh, I'm kind of digging that. Oh yeah, it's starting to come together. I'm kind of liking this, man. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see it all that that good. But I'm I'm digging it. Just a hint of the white. I'm gonna hit make the engines pop one last time, and then I think I'll be done with the airbrush, and then I'll start mixing up the uh, getting the, the the Citadel paints ready for the actual brush brush work. And I can, and, and generally one of the things I'm doing here too is I'm just experimenting with the bottom. Like I, the bottom's not really going to be seen very much, so I don't mind messing around with the bottom. But I kind of like, I kind of like the way that came out. What ship would I recommend giving a new paint job? Um, in general, I mean your favorite ship, whatever your favorite ship is, is what I would recommend. Um, I do think, like, and there's different contexts for that though. Um, so the rebel ships, since they're all supposed to be different, like if you're trying to start off, I would one thing I would suggest is like do a, a Corellian Corvette, right? And make one like the first thing I did when I did some of my Armada ships is I made my, all my CR nineties have different colored stripes. So instead of them all having the red stripes on the side like or like one in the box, some of them had blue stripes or, or you know a yellow stripe or an orange stripe, and I kept them 
like colors that you see in the rebellion so this way they all look canonically correct or at least mostly somebody will be like no there was never a, a yellow one it was only or there was never an orange one there was only blue and red or whatever i don't know but um do they add new mechanics in wave five for armada i'm i'm trying to think which was what was it wave five i think wave five was the phoenix home and the interdictor i think it was the was it the interdictor yeah so they added new upgrade slots in wave five um, because the interdictor has the grab wells, the experimental retrofit, and then the, the Phoenix home had the fleet support option. So they added those new things, they added new upgrade types. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna soak this in here. For now, this is just airbrush cleaner and water. And, and I have it labeled so I don't ever get it confused with something else I don't want any of the kids drinking out of it. <laughs> and that's it for the airbrush for tonight. Now we can get our regular brushes ready. I'm gonna put these away, do a little bit of maintenance here and get all these paints put away and then we'll start on the Citadel stuff. You turn your victory into a crimson command by turning it red. That was actually the first thing I did with my victory. So one of the reasons I started painting Armada ships is because I had an extra one by accident. And what I mean by that is I had a broken victory and I emailed Fantasy Flight about it. It was in it was like my first or second course set. The antenna was missing or had broken off in the box. So I contacted them, told them what was up. And I said, I don't need you to send me a whole new ship. I just need the antenna. But they sent me a whole new ship. And on the one that they sent me, the other antenna was broken. So, but I was able to take the antenna off of the one and apply it, no problem. After all that was said and done, I uh, had basically an extra victory that I had all the antennas, you know, stripped off of it. And I was okay with that. Use this one. No, I'm using this one. This one's a good one. All right. So I am using Eschen Gray from Citadel. It's a real dark gray. And Citadel paints are really thick, so I add some water to it. And, and basically what I'm going to do, i take the glasses off so I can look close up, is I'm going to go through and just hit individual panels. And one of the things I do is because I'm not a master airbrusher, some of my paints will spray out and I see like dots and stuff when I go in real close. And so any areas that I don't like the way that the airbrush came out on them, I can just cover them up. Like if I got a splotch on one, then that's just a good excuse for that to be one of the panels that I choose. Now, and I'm going to do this kind of all over. And this whole thing is dry by now. That's one of the cool things about the airbrushing is like they see seems to dry really quick. And it's really nice to do the raised portions of it too because they, it's really easy to get those raised portions and not have it you know, go anywhere else. Kind of keeps all the paint exactly where you want it to be. The paints are thicker, so they're not going to like slide down the edges. It kind of just stays exactly where you put it. All right. And while we're doing that, can I say which one 
because they got Amazon and they're all so expensive. Um, I am going to post the link to the specific one. Uh, it's a master airbrush. I'll post a link to it um, after I'm all done. I can't be typing right now though. I'm not at the computer. I'm next to the computer and my hands are covered in paint. So, and once I get all the gray done, um, I will go and I'll do lights. So I'll take some white and I'll do lighting. Since it's all black, the, the lighting will show up really, really well. Um, and so like right up here on the bridge is one of the places and like there's a splotch here and there's some splotches there. Those are places that I'll do in gray because there are mistakes and I like to cover up the mistakes. And this is a perfect reason because we've got gray panels. And the gray panels can represent battle damage and things that were replaced with imperial gray. This one is not actually just a, a panel, though, is it? So if I do that, I'm going to have to do the whole top. I don't want to do that. I'll probably just leave that one for now. A lot of raised areas, but the Interdictors also has less paneling than the Star Destroyer, the ISD, and the Victory do. They're, those ones are much easier. They have a lot of very pronounced panels, and they're all over the place. The Interdictor has a lot of tiny panels off to the side. But also getting some on the outer edges really contrasts that bright green. So I definitely like to get several on the outer edges. on the back that we can get some. I don't think that's really enough. I think I'm going to do a little bit more. And one of the things I'll also do is when I go around to the engine compartments, I'll probably I'll paint the outside of the engines. Let me do that now. Paint the outside of the engines so this way the, the glow effect, because sometimes it splatters in places I don't want it to splatter. And it kind of cleans that up. So the inside is kind of gray. I mean, it's, it's mostly black already. So it kind of all kind of blends in regardless. And it's okay to leave some engine splatter out there anyway, because it's just like the glowing effect of the engines. But I don't want too much all over the place, because at a certain point it just looks sloppy. So, all you guys who are watching, how many of you 
are looking forward to Legion as early as possibly next month. I think that's pretty exciting. Do a few more panels and then I'm gonna wrap up the gray. Then we'll start doing white. And white is a fun part. Because the white is very forgiving. And it starts to really bring it together when you do the white. side and that's going to do it. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my brush. And now we're going to do some white. And this is the basically the last step. And I'm using scar white or white scar rather. just want to put the tip in. and again with this one test it on the bottom first you just want lights and you want to just boop, boop, just like that just little dots and they're gonna be all in these panels right here There's all kinds of little windows in here. The Imperial is looking out. Their, their, all their quarters, all their, their briefing rooms. We're all looking out. Happy little windows. I'm Kravok Ross. These windows can be anything you want them to be. They can be gym windows. They can be restaurant windows. They can be Happy little clubs, happy little spice bars. I'm being ridiculous. But this really works because it's such a dark overall paint job. That they really pop. You also want those on the bridge, and the bridge is where you want them the most. So, but do the bridge last because if you make a mistake, you'd rather make it on the side or on the bottom, on the side. It's hard to make a mistake if you only have paint on the very, very, very tip. But if you're really shaky, I can totally see it. You can make that mistake. But then if you do, then just get some black paint, go over it again. And then try again. It's that easy.
one of these windows is the window where who's the guy in Rebels season three that didn't listen with him? Was was on board the, uh, the interdictor. a little too big, but that's okay. That's alright. Constantine, gosh. How am I forgetting him? Okay, so we got our dots on there. I gotta do the other side too, but that's gonna do it. That is gonna do it. might go back later and add some more gray panels or something like that, but you guys get the idea. I just want enough white that people can see it and realize that there's a whole Imperial family going on in here. They're living together and coexisting. Somewhere on board, Darth Vader might be strangling somebody if he was here visiting and wondering why those rebels got through the blockade, why those gravity wells were not operational like they were supposed to be. Oh, and we got the back. I almost forgot the back. There's all kinds of possibility for windows back there. We we'll make sure nobody's following us. All right, guys. Well, there it is. Let's get its base. Where's the base for this thing? And I'm gonna put it next to the ISD. ISD came out a little bit darker. The edges for this one came out a little brighter. What do you think? What do you think, guys? <laughs> all right. Well, we're all done here, so thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll probably go back and maybe add a few more gray panels at some point, but I'm going to wash up and start cleaning up because I got a lot of the airbrush and everything. There's a lot of stuff to clean up. So I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will put a link to the airbrush that I have in the description below once this video, video processes. And uh, that's going to do it for me. So I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.